Hello, it's been a while since I posted a video and I thought I would share with you what's been going on with me. Um, I am done with the Rogers therapy program and it has helped me immensely with my OCD and my general anxiety. I feel much more calmer in those areas. My social anxiety and my depression is still pretty strong. But at the end of the program, I got kind of depressed because I was afraid I was going to relapse. And this is the point of the video is to show you the times that I believe God has talked to me or shown me his presence. And I'm going to do it in backwards chrono chronological order. This happened to me about five times. And I am thankful for every time that it happened. Uh, the most recent time happened just this past Thursday. Like I said, I was very depressed, afraid I was going to relapse after going through the Rogers program. And so I was taking a nap. And in my mind, I saw a giant redwood, the strongest of all trees. And I was holding it holding it like it was my strength and my foundation and, and would not let it go. And I heard the tree say to me, Max, you are my son. I love you. You are growing in me. And, and I just, it, 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 it's something I'm holding on to because I believe like God is our rock, God is our refuge, and what is not what what is not a rock or a refuge but a strong tree that never sways and is always there to give you shade. And so I found that very very comforting. Um, the second time, and I'm going in backwards, uh, happened a couple summers ago. I was riding my bike. I live in Madison, so I was riding my bike around Lake Monona, and I was uh, riding past my church. A little something I have to say before before this is uh, I just watched uh, Jeremiah with Patrick Dempsey about Prophet Jeremiah, and. As I was crossing my church, and I was kind of winded because it, it was a long bike ride. It was like more, an hour and 20 minutes. Um, I heard in the back of my head a voice, not my own, commanding, surrender to Babylon. And I knew immediately what God meant. That God meant, do not rely on your own devices that this mental illness, this depression, this anxiety, this is my Babylon, but God is with me in this Babylon, and to rely on him, and to just surrender, instead of when King, I think it was Hedekiah, tried to flee to Egypt, instead of surrendering to Babylon, and God said to him through Jeremiah, if you surrendered to Babylon, you and your family would be safe. You'd be slaves, but you would be safe. And he didn't. And his sons were killed and he was blinded. And so I knew what God meant. Surrender to Babylon. Surrender to this mental illness. And know that God is with me in this. That's something that's very, very difficult to do. But I've been trying. And with God's help, I think I'm succeeding more than failing. The other time was when I was actually born again. Um, September of 08. I was on the verge of being a cynic. Thinking that the world was just trashed. That nobody cares about anyone else. That greed runs rampant. Hypocrisy runs rampant. And there couldn't be a God who would allow people to misuse his name. And so I wrote letters to, to 
televangelists and uh, high profile Christians, uh, asking them why they support policies that hurt the poor, hurt the environment, etc. And only one commented back, and that was uh, a pastor from Rick Warren's Saddleback Church. And he said, are you going to a church? Are you part of a church family? And I said, no. Because at that time, I believed religion was corrupted since Paul. Christianity was corrupt. That's what I believed at the time. And so, but, but yeah, I, that, that question, are you in a church family, really touched me. And so I prayed for the first time in six years when I'm not on an airplane. I always prayed on an airplane. Like there's no atheists in foxholes. There's no, I, I always was afraid, I'm afraid of flying. So I'd always pray on an airplane. But this is the first time praying on solid ground. And I just prayed, God, If you are out there, show me. The world is so evil. The world is so lost. The world is so full of hypocrisy and greed. And I felt God's presence. And I felt that Jesus is the only way. Not just for my own salvation. That I was lost. And that I was a sinner. But through his teachings, bring light to the injustice of the world, the hypocrisy of the world. And I heard a choir in the back of my head saying, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. As Christ, as our Father, brothers all are we. Let there be peace on earth. This is the moment now. And, and, and that, I was changed that day. And I knew that we have a, a, a Father who loves us and a Savior who gives us strength and who wants us to do His work on earth as it is in heaven. The other time, now I'm not saying all these are from God, uh, but the, uh, oh, there was another one. Uh, this was actually after that, um, November of the same year, I want to say 08. I have never had a serious girlfriend of with my social anxiety disorder, it's been very difficult to ask girls out. And I think I'm ugly and, and all, all, all sorts of stuff like that. And so I was really despondent. And I prayed to God, please God, let me know that I'm not going to be alone for the rest of my life. That there is a girl out there for me somewhere. And that night I had a dream. I was at St. Wenceslas Church, the church that my great, great, great grandfather built out in Water, Watertown or Waterloo, I believe. And my pastor was there and I was dressed up and he looked startled to see why I was there. And, and I, I said, no, you're not being married today. No, you will be married but it's going to be on his time. And just to, uh, uh, just to make the point, the, the, the camera in my dream focused on the steeple of the church and the cross. And that gave me great comfort. That gave me great comfort knowing that God loves me and, and, and knowing that there will be someone out, for, uh, out there for me, but it's on God's time. And the first, and like I said, this one, I don't know if it was from God or not. 
but this was shortly after leaving the Catholic Church after the sex scandal of 2002. And I didn't, and I thought all Protestant church, church was fundamentalism, hypocrisy, etc. And so this is my dream. I was going home, going to my place with a couple of my friends who were all atheists. Uh, former Christians, but now atheists. And there was a living crash on my front lawn. Uh, Mary, Joseph, Wiseman, Shepherds, the whole nine yards. And Mary and Joseph were going on a tirade about how homosexuals should be killed. How God hates sinners, and the sinners will burn in hell, and... And fags will burn in hell. I mean, really, what I considered very bad hate, hatred speech. And I reached out my hand and said in my dream to Mary, I believe, don't you realize what you're doing? You're pushing people away from God. And then Mary cold cocked me, punched me. And so then we went into the car and Joseph had a sledgehammer and killed my friend Beth. And then we drove off to my best friend's apartment and there were guys dressed up like in suits and looked kind of like either Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormon elders, kind of like with the name tag right here, kind of like zombies saying, hey, 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 and killing and eventually trying to kill all my friends. And at first I thought this was just my subconscious telling me, um, t telling me that religion is controlling and religion that you don't want no part of religion and then once I was born again I started thinking maybe God was giving me this as a warning uh, showing that churches with a hate-filled message are driving people away from the church are driving people away from the kingdom And uh, killing them spiritually. I truly believe that everyone has a God shaped hole in their heart, but when you see a Christianity that values money, over the plight of the poor, a Christianity that is a jingoistic, militant Christianity, a Christianity that believes homosexuals should still be stoned to death. It isn't any wonder atheism is going up. And so that's what I think that that dream was trying to tell me. I, I Like I said, I could be wrong. Uh, it could be a bad piece of be beef I had. But I just wanted to share you these um, moments with God. And if any of you have had visions or have had experiences with God, um, please have a... Um, have a response video. I'd love to hear them. God bless.